What's going on, guys? Soldier Only here from Sports Nerd Web. Welcome to this week's episode of Sports Nerd Web Weekly. We got a lot of good stuff to get into this week. Starting it off, Uncharted: The Lost Legacy uh, finally has uh, a release date and a price revealed on it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the the Uncharted: The Lost Legacy's re release date has been announced. Uh, the spinoff will launch for PlayStation 4 on August 22nd. In North America, obviously August 22nd of this year. Uh, the standalone DLC has a new trailer showing off one of the game's cinematic scenes between main, main characters Nadine Ross and Chloe Frazier. Uh, you can take a look for it yourself at uh, GameSpot.com. Uh, Naughty Dog also re revealed that the game will cost $40, and those who pre order the upcoming Uncharted game at participating retailers will receive a free digital copy of Jack and Dexter, Jack and Daxter, the precursor trilogy on PS4. Uh, those who pre-order on the PlayStation Store, meanwhile, will get a Lost Legacy PS4 theme on top of that. Uh, just recently, developer Naughty Dog implied the Lost Legacy could be more than 10 hours long, despite many believing it to simply be a small-scale expansion. Uh, quote, Years ago, when we were asked if we, if we were ever doing a single-player expansion for Uncharted, we always said, well, we don't have the self-discipline to do that. Uh, said Naughty Dog head of communications Arn Meyer. If we tried to do that, we'd create a full game. There's no way we could constrict and restrain ourselves, and that's exactly what was happening here. When when we were doing story pitches, pitches, we were coming up with a game that would be over 10 hours long, and so we suddenly realized everything we said was true, and we couldn't keep it short. End quote. While the final length of The Lost Legacy was not revealed, Meyer's comments suggest Naughty Dog was not able to shorten the story's length, and it therefore may take some time to complete. The upcoming, the, upcoming game is <clears throat> the upcoming game is an expansion of sorts to Uncharted 4, A Thief's End, though it is standalone so you don't need to own Uncharted 4 to play The Lost Legacy. Naughty Dog also says the title will contain the Uncharted series' biggest ever level. However, it is, un it is likely to be the company's last ever game in the franchise and Nathan Drake will not feature in it at all. Okay, so... I'm glad that they cut that they cleared a few things up with this. Uh, I mean that my impression of the game uh, the entire time, ever since I've heard about it, is that it is going to be huge. Is that uh, I mean that's what I've been hearing since the beginning, right? Is that it's practically a game in and of itself, uh, especially for it to be a DLC. Uh, I mean it's technically not even really like a DLC. Like they said, you don't even need Uncharted Four uh, to even play The Lost Legacy. It's 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 its own standalone thing, just set in the universe of Uncharted. Um, I didn't I didn't think that Nathan Drake would would really be in this at all. Uh, I have known that it is taking place after the events of Uncharted Four, uh, but I still didn't think uh, Nathan Drake would really f figure into it at all. Uh, the only thing that we really know about the narrative is that uh, th the main character is Chloe Frazier and that she's looking into. Uh, Pretty much the backstory of herself, right? She's trying to, it's, it has, hence the name, The Lost Legacy. Uh, that's what I've heard about it is that she's looking for an artifact or something that pertains to her past. Uh, so I'm really intrigued to play this game. I'm stoked for it. And, because uh, I definitely want to learn more about Chloe Frazier. Uh, I mean, one of the best. Uh, one of the best entries in the series. A lot of Uncharted fans, a lot of their favorite entry in the series is Uncharted 2, when, when it, which is the title that she was introduced in. Um, I mean, I, I'm actually planning on going back and playing the Uncharted series here soon, and and I'll be streaming all of it as well too. Um, probably making, I'll probably make some Let's Play videos and stream archives and stuff as well for the YouTube channel. But uh, it's good that we. I haven't checked out this new trailer yet. I have seen the, the previous announcement trailer, which was really neat. Uh, so, um, I am, I am gonna, uh, watch the trailer later and check it out, but it's good that we have a release date. Uh, once again, it looks like it's August 22nd of this year, and it will be, uh, for a $40, uh, expansion. I don't know why they're even still calling it an expansion, since you really don't need the base, the Uncharted 4 base game, so, uh, I don't know, it's, it's kind of weird. Uh, next up, uh, there was, a, a slight leak uh, related to Overwatch. Uh, Overwatch's next event, uh, Insurrection, is what it looks like it's called, uh, looks like a new Horde mode is coming to Overwatch this week. 
Details on the next big event for Overwatch appear to have leaked in a new trailer, revealing what appears to be a new cooperative horde style mode for the game. The event, Overwatch Insurrection, will also include a fresh batch of skins and other cosmetics for players to collect. Based on a trailer posted by PlayStation France to YouTube, which has since been pulled, Overwatch's new mode appears to be set on a daytime version of the King's Row map. Designed to Designed to let players relive one of the key moments in the history of Overwatch, players will seemingly battle a massive onslaught of omnic foes, including swarms of two-legged mechanical beasts and shield-bearing robots. It appears that players will be able to play as one of four core Overwatch team members, Tracer, Reinhardt, Mercy, and Torbjorn. In an earlier limited time event, Halloween Terror players could battle waves of omnic enemies in Junkenstein's Revenge and were limited to four characters, Anna, McCree, Hanzo, and Soldier 76. In addition to a new gameplay mode, the Insurrection update will bring with it a batch of new skins for McCree, Genji, Widowmaker, Mercy, Torbjorn, Bastion, and Orisa. Blizzard promises more than 100 unlockable items, including skins, sprays, emotes, and poses. Overwatch Insurrection is scheduled to run from April 11th to May 1st, according to the trailer, which that would be uh, today. So I probably have to check up on that because today is April 11th. I haven't. Uh, this is honestly the most recent thing I can find on this, so uh, I haven't heard anything other after this. Uh, last week, Blizzard began teasing the release of Overwatch Mission Archives, in which players would revisit the King's Row Uprising. Shortly after, the company released a new digital comic that offered new story details on the Omnic Uprising, giving us our first look at a batch of fresh throwback Overwatch skins. Uh, I mean, admittedly, as I've been seeing in stream a lot lately, I haven't played a lot of Overwatch. I haven't played it too much in quite a long time. Uh, I currently have it for PS4, uh, and I really do need to start playing it some more, but I actually want to get it for PC and start playing it on that, because I, I just think that would be... I think that game would be incredible on mouse and keyboard. Uh, so once I get it for that, I definitely will play it some more. Uh, but if this if this is in fact uh, what the next event is that we're getting in an Overwatch, uh, a horde mode like this could be really awesome. So I'm I'm probably gonna have to dive into it and check it back out. So stay tuned to uh, to my Twitch channel because I'll probably be streaming this uh, coming up in the near future as well. Uh, speaking of PC and other good PC uh, news, it looks like Bayonetta is coming to PC, uh, which is great news for me because I have actually never played Bayonetta and I've always wanted to get into that series, but I don't own a Wii U or you know anything like that. So uh, this is, this actually came out today. Sega and Platinum Games released the action game exclusively on Steam. Platinum Games' witchy character action game Bayonetta is now available for Windows PC via Steam, Sega announced today. The PC port of the 2009 game will feature a wealth of graphics options, Sega said, including resolutions up to 4K and support for 60 frames per second uh, refresh rate. Bayonetta for PC will also feature anti-aliasing, uh, anisotropic filtering, SSAO lighting, uh, scalable texture and shadow quality and more. The game also supports keyboard and mouse controls, uh, Sega said. Bayonetta for PC is available exclusively on Steam and supports many of the service's features, uh, including Steam Achievements, Steam Cloud Save, Trading Cards, Leaderboards, and Big Picture Mode. Platinum Games was directly involved in the Windows PC port of Bayonetta, according to Sega, potentially good news for fans of the developer's action games. The original Bayonetta was first released in 2009 on PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. The over-the-top, tongue-in-cheek action game tells the story of the eponymous uh, Bayonetta, the last survivor of an ancient witch clan who keep the balance between light, dark, and chaos. Sega and Platinum Games later brought the title to Wii U alongside the release of the sequel Bayonetta 2 in 2014. Okay, yeah, so I'm an idiot. I forgot that it was on PS3 and Xbox 360 in the past. Um, so I guess for whatever reason, I just never did play it back then as well. <laughs> Sega has been on a Sega has been on a streak of re-releasing console games like The Typing of the Dead and uh, Valkyria Chronicles on PC in recent years. Based on comments from Sega, it sounds like the publisher isn't stopping with Bayonetta. "Quote: We are dedicated to bringing high-quality, best-practice PC conversions of our back catalog games to our fans, and Bayonetta was a great fit." End quote. Uh, that was from John Clark, senior vice president of commercial publishing for Sega Europe. Uh, 
Uh, quote, Bayonetta is one of the most often requested PC conversions of our game, so finally being able to launch it on Steam is fantastic. There's more to come, end quote. So that's that's actually really good news uh, that, they are, that they are actually planning on bringing more games from their back catalog uh, on, onto PC. So uh, we're definitely going to have to... Uh, we're definitely gonna have to pay, uh, keep uh, pay, pay attention to the storyline and see what else uh, they're gonna have coming down the pipeline. Uh, real quick, one thing up. Uh, I got some news to get into on the Wildland on some Wildlands DLC. We'll get into that in a second, but I wanted to go over this uh, article that I found online real quick. It has to pertain to Marvel video games. I mean, we all know about. How ironic it is! It's how ironic it is that uh, you know video games never make good movies, and movies never make good video games, really. You know, so uh, it it kind of has a little bit to do with that. Uh, Marvel games won't be tied to MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which is the best decision they can make. Marvel games isn't forcing its developers to tie their video games into existing Marvel Cinematic Universe storylines. This might sound weird given how interconnected the MCU has been over the past decade, but it's actually a blessing in disguise. Uh, let me see here. All right, um, it's actually a blessing in disguise. Uh, Marvel Games creative director Bill Roseman told IGN at Dice that the teams behind Marvel's upcoming video game releases were granted the freedom to come up with their own storylines, and they won't have to match release dates with upcoming films. These include Spider-Man for PS4, Guardians of the Galaxy, the Telltale series, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, and the Avengers Project for Square Enix. Let me say real quick, I am really stoked for that game, even though we haven't heard literally anything or seen anything of it, but for Square Enix to be doing an Avengers game, that could be something incredible, because uh, from what I understand, it's like it's the same studio that's been making the, the, t the newer... Uh, Tomb Raider games, uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, and so forth. Uh, it's a bit like we're saying, hey, you're the chef, you're going to make this meal, here's all of the ingredients. You pick the ingredients that you like and make a new meal. We want all of our games to tell an original, all-new story. Uh, this is not an accident. Even though the MCU has been, on average, more successful than the DCEU, Marvel has largely sucked in the video games department. Many of their movie tie-in games were critical and commercial flops, like The Amazing Spider-Man 2, or Thor God of Thunder. Even when they got the original voice cast, like with 2008's Iron Man video game, the games failed to impress. It's partially why in 2014, Marvel Games pressed the pause button on the entire video games division, refusing to renew long-standing licenses for Activision and Capcom. They pulled several titles from Steam, including a Deadpool game that had only been out for six months, even though it was later reissued after the film's uh, success. They also re refused to make console or PC games for some of their most successful franchises, including the Avengers, whose first-person game had been canceled two years prior. Since then, it's been mostly mobile games, along with the occasional LEGO release in Disney Infinity, which was canceled late last year. Marvel's games may have struggled, but DC's thrived. DC has had some of the most successful superhero games in recent memory, including the Batman Arkham series and Injustice Gods Among Us, whose anticipated sequel comes out in May. That's because Warner Brothers, which took over DC video game production in 2009, gave developers more freedom to come up with their own in interpretations of the comic book characters. It's clear Marvel took inspiration from DC's success and pressed the reset button on their entire video game enterprise so they could start fresh. In fact, Jay Ong, Marvel's vice president of games, told Polygon in 2016 that they were ushering in a new era for Marvel games. In doing so, Marvel made the right choice. Players have shown time and time again that, that they don't want a simple recreation of a movie they've already seen. They want to see their favorite heroes in unique yet identif identifiable situations they can't get anywhere else, including at the box office. And this is the part right here in the article that, that really struck with me and that I really wanted to mention in, in this week's episode. It's why Marvel's shows on Netflix have been doing so well. They're darker and more eth ethically complex than their cinematic counterparts, showing fans a different angle of something familiar. Only time will tell whether Marvel Games Gamble will pay off. Uh, Telltale's Guardians game will, will be the first test coming out sometime this year. But hey, at least they're taking the risk. So, with them saying that, uh, that the that the Guardians of the Gal Galaxy Telltale game is the first is the first test. It's the first one that's supposed to be coming out. And all that we know is that it's supposed to be coming out sometime this year. It makes you wonder exactly what the release date is looking like for the Spider-Man one that Insomniac's working on. 
because I am really excited for that one as well. Uh, I mean, we haven't really heard much about it, just like the uh, Square Enix Avengers project, but you immediately have high hopes on it because of the studios that are attached to it. And sometimes, you know, and obviously sometimes that's not fair, but that's just the reality uh, and the way that it goes sometimes. So, uh, moving right along into uh, the main uh, story for the day. Uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands uh, DLC uh, was in the news today. Uh, we get, uh, we're getting, we're finally getting the release date on Ghost Recon Wildlands first DLC and some details on it as well, including nitro boosted muscle cars coming <laughs> this month. The first expansion for Tom Clancy's Ghost Re Recon Wildlands, called Narco Road, will release on April 25th for $14.99 for all platforms. Season Pass holders will have access to the DLC a full week before on April 18th. In Narco Road, players must earn the trust of three new gang bosses who are collectively led by the elusive El Invisible in Bolivia. There are 15 campaign missions for players to work through in their effort to take down El Invisible as well as new types of side missions and racing challenges, which must be completed to earn more fame and followers. The expansion features four exclusive outfits and nine new weapons, plus four new vehicle types, including monster trucks, nitro-boosted muscle cars, motorcycles, and aerobatic planes. A new update for Ghost Recon Wildlands will also go live on April 12th for consoles and April 14th for PC, introducing weekly challenges that will refresh every Wednesday. These challenges tie in with a themed season exploring a story across six weeks and completing them rewards players with up to three in-game unique items a week. The first season will have players uh, combat Unidad's threat to the country and the rise and fall of uh, Unidad. Uh, Fallen Ghosts is, will be the second expansion for Wildlands, will be available in the near future along with a new 4v4 PvP mode. The still available $40 season pass includes both of these expansions, a permanent 5% XP booster, a single-use 2-hour XP booster, more missions, and equipment packs. <coughs> so, uh, yeah, they said that it is a, yeah, it's a $40 season pass, so, I mean, it is kind of cheap, but you are getting two expansions uh, and, and, some other, uh, and, and some other stuff, but... Uh, I mean, and, it's, and, it, and it seems like the expansions kind of have a little bit of meat on their bones, right? But the thing is, is this update that's rolling out on April 12th for consoles and April 14th for PC, I believe that that's the free update. And, uh, oh no, never mind. I'm sorry, I, I almost had that wrong. But anyways, okay, the, so the one that's coming out for free, the free update on April 12th for consoles and April 14th for PC, is the one that's introducing weekly challenges that will refresh every Wednesday. I like that they're doing this. I mean, it's kind of a thing that I think Destiny has been bringing, uh, that has kind of made popular with the week, weekly reset. I mean, because you're even, you're even seeing a form of it in Division now, uh, you know, where they have weekly resets where challenges and activities reset each week. Um, and that's awesome to see Ghost Recon doing that. It keeps the game fresh. It keeps you coming back to it every single day, trying to complete these week in and week out. Uh, and it's cool how it said these challenges tie in with a themed season. So, uh, and it says exploring a story across six weeks. So these uh, these weekly challenges refresh every Wednesday, but over this over a six week period, it has a themed an overall theme uh, arcing over six weeks. Uh, and it says in completing them rewards players with up to three in-game unique items a week. So each week you'll have uh, three in-game unique items uh, to get by completing these. Uh, and it looks like that that this six-week uh, season arc uh, has players combating Unidad's threat to the country, and and they're calling it the rise and fall of Unidad. So uh, we'll also have to stay uh, pay attention to this as well to see what future uh, what the future seasons are themed and what it has to do with. Uh, and as far as the expansions, I, I, I mean, those sound really good as well, too. Uh, I mean, in, in the first one, the one that's <coughs> coming out on the 25th in Narco Road, you're getting 15 new campaign missions uh, and, a, and uh, three new gang bosses as well, too. So that's a, that's a pretty, pretty good-sized expansion. 
And then uh, the one that we're supposed to be getting in the near future, uh, the Fallen Ghost one, uh, that's the one that we're going to be getting the the new 4v4 PvP mode that we've been hearing about pretty much since Wildlands launch. Uh, so that's good to know that we know that that's coming soon. We don't have a date on that second expansion yet. All we know is that it's in the near future. Uh, but it looks like uh, for the time being, we, the free update will roll out on the 12th and 14th. Uh, and then the first paid expansion, Narco Road, will release on April 25th. And like I said, it will be $14.99 uh, to get the expansion singly. Or like I said, there's a $40 season pass as well. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, if it's $14.99 for one, why don't you just buy them individually and it's 30 <laughs> Hmm. Makes you wonder. But the thing is, is then if they come out with a third one, that would be included in that $40 season pass and so on and so forth. So I don't know. We'll just kind of see what they do. You would think because if you buy them individually, it's 30 and then for the season pass, it's 40 I mean, you would think that there maybe there is a third DLC that we haven't heard about yet. So I don't know. Stay tuned to Sports Nerd Web for more uh, on this in the future. Uh, that's going to do it for this week. Thanks for watching. Hit that thumbs up button if you like the video. If you're new to the channel, hit that sub button to sub to the channel for more content. And we will see you in the next one.